Hi there, welcome to this video on Loftus and Palmer's 1974 piece of research on the reconstruction of an automobile destruction, uh, an example of the interaction between language and memory. So lots of you probably know this as a car crash study. Here we go. A little bit of background to the research just before we get going. So this piece of research is based largely upon a really old piece of research, um, which was by Bartlett, which was called The War of the Ghosts. And Bartlett basically made some predictions about schema and the role of schemas in memory. So your schemas are your building blocks of knowledge. And it's interesting really how schemas affect incoming information. So we've got Loftus and Palmer, 1974. It's a laboratory-based piece of research, uh, the reconstructive nature of memory, and it had an independent measures design. Here is Elizabeth Loftus, if you hadn't ever come across her before. Very, very important female psychologist. Now, she was interested in eyewitness testimony, mainly from a court-based perspective, because a lot of people were getting sent to jail on the basis of eyewitness testimony. So she was interested whether or not these eyewitness testimonies were reliable in court. Here's the aim of the piece of research. So the research question was essentially addressed by looking at two different experiments that was carried out at this piece of research. So it's basically investigating the effects of language on memory. Right, so experiment one, remember I said there are two experiments in this piece of research. In experiment one, you had a group of people. There were 45 people in the group. These 45 were divided up into five different groups. If you do the maths really quickly, you'll come up with nine participants in each group. So what these participants were asked to do was watch some videos of car crashes. Uh, there were seven videos they were watching all together and each of the videos varied in length five to thirty seconds long. Okay after the videos, well after each video they were asked uh, some questions about what they'd seen so kind of general questions about the accident itself and then some kind of more specific questions about the accident they'd seen. These were called distractor questions. They were also asked a critical question about the estimate of the speed the cars were going at. Now these critical questions are crucial for experiment one because these critical questions are the independent variable so we just kind of set them out. So it was something along the lines of about how fast were the cars going when they somethinged each other. Remember, there were five different groups, so five variations. Smashed, collided, bumped, hit, and finally contacted. Now, you need to remember these questions if you're struggling to do that. Simon Cowell has a cat, and at one point I heard that Simon Cowell may or may not have bit his cat smash collided bumped hit just a little mnemonic technique for you there all right so moving on to what loftus and palmer found in the initial experiment that's experiment one so drum roll please um for the results here we go so remember five different verbs used smashed hit collided contacted bumped. Okay, that's the order of the speed estimates. Mean speed estimate smash 40.8, collided 39.3, bumped 38.1, hit 34, contacted 31.8. Those are the mean estimates of the speed across those seven videos. Now that was a statistically significant result. So statistically significant between the uh, estimates of speed based on the different verbs and obviously lost mom. Very pleased there that they'd found support for the hypothesis. Super. Right. Experiment two. So a little bit different this time. Uh, one of the main differences being the sample size in experiment two was much larger this time. This time they had 150 participants. This time they were divided up into three groups, not the five, like in experiment one. Do the maths very quickly. 150 divided by three. It's 50. OK, 50 participants in each group. Now, they just watched one video this time of kind of multiple cars kind of boom crashing together. And much like in experiment one, they were asked some questions, kind of distractor questions about, oh, what was going on in the video? Blah, 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 blah. What did you see? Et cetera, et cetera. But just like in experiment one, there's a very important question that was asked. Now, there's only three groups. So first group had about how fast were the cars going when they smashed. Second group had when they hit. Third group control condition, no question at all about speed. 
Fast forward in time, one week later, all the participants come back. They don't watch any more films. They just get asked a really simple question. And the question that they get asked is, the video that you saw last week, did you see any broken glass? Yes or no response was all they were required to give. Remember, condition one had smashed, two hit, three had nothing to do with estimating speed at all. The results showed those people in the smash condition were more likely to say they saw broken glass. In fact, 16 out of 50 hit was 7 out of 50, which is right close to the control, which was 6 out of 50. Now, hold on a minute. There wasn't any smashed glass. Now, what do these results from these two experiments show us? Essentially, just some really important conclusions that we need to draw here. Uh, the main one being that leading questions do have an effect on our recollection of events because the estimates changed and also people said they saw something that wasn't actually there. Thank you very much for watching this very quick video on Loftus and Palmer. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube below just to keep up date with further videos.